There it is. Now we're recording. So uh, welcome to our Leaning Into the AR VR World webinar. My name is Clyde <coughs> Tabor, and I'm the director of the Visual Story Network. You can get all of my contact information here at this link, visualstory.org forward slash connect. Uh, we're this loose-knit community of about 2,800 believers in 95 countries. Our passions are these. We use media, story, and innovative technology for the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead, and if you go to visualstory.org, you can create a, a profile there and meet others within the community. We're hosting today's webinar because the developing technologies of augmented and virtual reality will change the world in unimaginable ways in the next five to 10 years. Our heart is to foster a movement of innovative technology, and we want to see these technology used for the sake of the kingdom. We typically start slow when we start new communities or networks because we want them to be built upon knowing one another, liking one another, and trusting one another. When we've done that, typically collaboration is more inclined or more likely to take place. Uh, since we started 10 years ago as the Visual Story Network, we've seen more than 200 different collaborative projects, products, and partnerships emerge. When we started, we were one network. Now we've become a network of networks. And so I won't get into all of that. So uh, here's kind of where we're going today. We're going to have Jay Cranda from Saddleback Church talking about how the church can adapt technology. El Michelle Salvin is going to be talking about principles of building VR environments. We'll have a little time for Q&A. And then we're going to really hopefully allow enough time for a number of us to give a 20 second shout out on who you are, where you are, and kind of what your area of interest is, because we want you to get to know one another. And we'll wrap up with some announcements. Um, so brief introduction. Jay Cranda is the online campus pastor at Saddleback Church. He oversees an online community of online and home groups around the world. He also helps organizations with online to offline strategy focusing on deep engagement. He's the part owner of tvapp.church that helps ministries get onto cord cutting platforms. He loves NBA basketball and cold brew coffee. He's married to Jody for nine years. They have uh, two boys and a girl. El Michelle is a media maven who founded elmichelle.media.co, a company focused on helping Christians, uh, Christian faith and educational organizations find innovative ways of using media to move you forward. She recently created Believe AR, a first of its kind virtual reality environment for stories of faith captured with 360 media technology. She's the media ministry director at Higher Dimension Church in Tallahassee. This fall, she's releasing her first ministry journal book, Dear Armor Bearer. It's a testimonial of the benefits of servant leadership. She's got a BS degree in broadcast journalism from Florida A&M University, and she's working on her MBA there. And she lives in Tallahassee with her husband, Sergeant Christopher King Salvin Sr., and her son, Christopher King Salvin Jr. So Jay, Jay's going to talk. He's going to give us 15 minutes and then transition straight away to L. And then um, we will um, have time for Q&A. So go ahead and take it away, Jay. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, good morning, my time. And afternoon, evening, everybody. I love hearing where everybody's coming from. Uh, so my name is Jay. I, I am an online pastor. So I log about anywhere between 20 to 30 hours a month on Zoom. So you're actually in my world right now. Um, and so I, I want to, I'm really excited to talk about this because I really believe technology is a love language. It's not a, uh, a thing that you do at a certain age because we can see on this call, there's all sorts of people at, at different uh, parts of life. And really, if, if you're interested in technology, I think that's something that's going to stick with you your entire life. And the younger generations get the more it's integrated into their world. And, you know, my, my kids, I, I have three kids, but two of them are at the age where they're talking and walking and, you know, they're just on devices and they're not one device individuals. They're multiple devices. My first computer wasn't something that I tried till I was like, you know, 12, 13. And all I could do was like Minecraft and solitaire. Um, and that was my first introduction. And now it's just 
our everybody uh, is on these devices. And I love this conversation because I think this is something that I wish I got when I was in seminary. Um, and so first off the bat, number one, uh, kind of leading into that is that I don't think it's a, uh, it's a or, but it's an and type of option. So when we're approaching AR and VR and getting a website and all these different things that are part of this conversation, it used to be you would pick one. And now it isn't that. It's people expect to be on everything. And I know that sometimes can be a hard business can be, can be limited on resources that, that can be hard to approach. But our people that we want to reach, they want fluid digital experiences. They assume that it's going to be on this and it's not, are you going to be an iPhone? Or are you going to be an Android? Are you going to be this and that? It's going to be, they just are going to assume because the people that, uh, the people and the products that they normally pay for are, when I come home, you know, I might be listening to a podcast in my ears. Able to buy it home. If I want, I could finish it up on my, you know, my TV using Amazon Fire. And there's this fluid digital kind of exchange that's happening. And so when we're looking at VR, AR, it's not which one should I do. It's you got to be looking at, hey, down the road, we want to be on all these things. And the cool thing is it's getting cheaper and cheaper and easier and easier to do these things. Um, and so every moment that goes by, there's a new option on face on I even do three 360 video directly from your phone. And so it, it's the seamless experience and this as a digital experience. Um, and, and I really want you to focus on that, especially storytelling is that you're trying to tell a, a story and you're trying to not just do something cool, but you're trying to make it something that's integrated in your vision. In, in your mission. I was looking at I Hey Jay our experience right now that they're Jay. testing out where yes is it uh, breaking just, up for whatever bit? reason every every 40 seconds we're getting a three second hang up so I don't know it's probably just an internet thing. I don't know if there's any background yeah. if you could turn you want off. To turn off my video. If it's a bandwidth well I hate to lose your video though. I know that's the other option. That's like the worst case. Let's just keep going. And um. anyway. And if yeah, it gets bad, I, I'll I was you noticing that. So, yeah, so it, it, that's our worst case scenario. But keep going with the video on. Okay. Um, yeah. So the one of the, one of the things that I was is this experience. This uh, IKEA. If you shop IKEA, you know some of the difficulties of finding things, and there's so many options. But now they're introducing and testing that on your phone, and you actually buy an item and you could place it real time in your living room. And that, that's the type of thing of, of our specifically adding value to your situation. It isn't just a gimmick, but it's actually helpful and useful for your experience. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a, or, but an, and number two, we all know this being storytellers and, and I'm seeing a lot of people with video expertise, but visuals are still vital. You know, when we're looking at specifically social media, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all these things prioritize visuals, things like photos and video and live streaming get prioritized in the feed. And this is why AR and VR is so uh, important is because it makes the visual experience to the next level. It's not just a static image, but the, it's, it's something that's interactive. A couple months ago, Facebook, you started seeing on Facebook in your, in your stream, uh, you know, you seeing color backgrounds with text posts. And the reason is they know that photos and videos are way more engaging. More people see it. It takes up more visual space in your stream. So there's a high, higher likelihood of engagement. And this is why AR and VR is so important. And I, and I was thinking there's so many tools now, you know, there's things even with graphics, you know, you can use Canva or shark that are, are great tools to create compelling graphics. Uh, I, I was, I was going through my stream and I saw a great, uh, execution of this, and I know probably El Michelle is probably going to talk about this more with her expertise with VR and AR. But I, I saw I, I call 360 video sometimes it can be like ex, uh, cheap, affordable. Is this find uh, where's Waldo? And what they did was they captured Jay, a 360. I'm sorry, you went out. You went out at cheap, affordable. Just say that again. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? You know what? Yeah, Let's, no, I'm sorry about that, guys. You know what? So, uh, oh gosh, I hate to go to just the uh, just an icon. So we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Okay. Uh, there was a great experience I, I was I saw on Facebook and actually caught my attention. And anytime, and this is something a, a, a tip I would recommend. Anytime you're on Facebook and something catches your attention, I I always try to like figure out reverse engineer it. What got my attention on? Is that something, a principle that I can apply to my own ministry? Uh, but there was this 360 video of Wills Wal Walder. And what it, what, what it was, was the classic find Walder, but it was a 360 photo. And I found myself trying to look for Walder, but this was a fun interactive type of experience where I was like, it was very simple. It was just a 360 photo, but I was actually sitting there and you know looking around. But again, that's a fun type of interactive way to engage in, you know, with that type of technology. And I think that's really important. You're trying to add value that's linked to your mission vision. And then three, uh, you know, more and more live stream everything that you can to have real experiences. And I think AR and VR is getting a lot better with this tech technology. You know, a, a, a couple of years ago when we at my church started doing live streaming, just our services, just traditional live streaming, whatever you want to call it now, you know, it used to cost us thousands of dollars to pull something like that off. Now, now with Facebook Live, you don't need any money. And so you can just throw up a phone and you can start going. So if you're sitting here and you're, you know, I'm talking about IKEA VR stuff and you're gonna hear, oh, Michelle talking and you're going like, how is this possible? Trust me, people like uh, Google and Apple and, and Facebook, they're all, they have huge incentives to make this easy and affordable because the more you spend on their platform, the more that they could charge money for, for their ads. And so I, I think we will have better and better solutions move, moving forward. But th you know, something that you'll see, something I've watched uh, as, a, as you heard in my bio, I love basketball. The NBA has been really forward thinking in this where they provided a lot of 360 type of VR experiences. And you, you were able to watch uh, the all-star game and, and some of the finals games in 360. And, and the idea is that if you had, and they, they limited it to a certain devices, but the idea is that you could actually see, you know, what the experience would be like if you're sitting in there. You don't have to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for Jack Nicholas's seat. You can literally just throw on a, a headset. And this is an immersive experience. And, you know, something I love about this, uh, you know, Netflix started testing out uh, this with, um, uh, with movies. You could actually, there's play, there's apps in like the VR store, uh, for Oculus Rift and stuff where you can actually watch a Netflix show in a theater and the idea it's 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 blocked off and there there's so many there's so many amazing things you're going that, that are happening with this technology and and what I would what I would just another tip is just still as much as possible as you can as you see different people try out new ideas um, and then the next one is there's this principle that I think is very helpful for ministries and sometimes we don't always take advantage of this but this, this idea of backstage access. And something that I, I think is really important is with the internet, the, you know, the, there was this assumption that you, know, you can go deep with everybody, but really all that's happened is there's all these micro communities that have you know, popped up. And I think what you should be thinking about as a ministry, um, somebody who's looking at connecting people uh, with Jesus and helping them you know, grow you know, in their faith is, it's thinking about what are the things that you do that you pull off that people want to know more of. And, you know, I think about this with, you know, if it's a, somebody that I, I I'm interested in, in how they live, you know, or if there's, if there's like a basketball player or, or whatever, I want to know what, what all leads up to pulling off this event. This webinar is a, is a great example. Like, okay, this thing happened and you're here, but what, what's the story that led up to this to pull this thing off? And I think, one that one of the easiest ways we can give backstage access to our community who want more content is uh you know through instagram stories is a great example doing you know so you have this big event and you know boom this thing happens but maybe you do like a 24 hour lead up all the things that happen and people love that because they they just see the pretty event but maybe they didn't see like the coffee spill in your shirt and the technical thing and and people want to be engaged they want to go deeper and we got to provide ways and what I love about Instagram and all these tools you know some, some of you might know this and some of you might not is one of the first expressions of AR to a large platform was snapchat and uh, with snapchat's face filters 
that's AR technology integrated. And so those are some of the first integrations of you're seeing hundreds of thousands, millions of people using AR technology it was on Snapchat and then Facebook just stole it for Instagram and, you know, and, and that's the way it goes. Um, and so I'm glad I don't own any Snapchat st stock. Four minutes right? um, yeah. And so um, integrate with, with, with your community and, and share more. And really, I, I think is with sometimes people assume you just want to do, you know, more large events, but really what you want to do is you, you want to bring people behind the curtain and show how, how the cake, you know, there's thousands of channels showing how things are done and backstage access and hearing people's stories. And sometimes the way you can go deeper with your community and have a connection is just share more of the inner workings of, 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 of your week and, and how something's pulled off and Instagram stories is one of the, the easiest ways and have fun too with all the face filters as well. You, use some AR there. And then, Lastly, this idea of focusing on what your target wants is so vital. And the reason why I say that is because the goal shouldn't be just to do everything. The goal is thinking about what's your end in mind, who you're trying to go after, and figure out having a real conversation around what platforms and technology are they using and where, where is their growth. And I think that's the struggle is sometimes people go, they see something like they might listen to a TED Talk or something. There's a great TED Talk. But the idea is that we, we see something, we want to execute it. And what we should be doing is we should be going, who are we trying to go after, how old they are, and start talking to those individuals on the type of experiences they're wanting and they're using. Because the more you can integrate into that, uh, the more powerful you can in communicating to them. You know, one great, um, you know, the, and this will be my, my, my last thing here, but one great execution of this that I was thinking about was Crayola. Crayons has, has a AR experience for kids and a coloring book. And I remember seeing that I was like, you know, I was reading about AR, VR and, and just interested in it. And I saw this, this, this coloring book pop up on, on my feed. And it was this, my kids could draw this thing. And then we take out a phone, we download an app and you could see this this thing grow and there's this story that happens. So I think it was two dinosaurs or something you put over your phone and they go. And that was a perfect execution of, of AR executed for kids. It's like, so you might go like, Oh, kids can't even handle that. But that was a, per it was very simple. It was draw a picture and then they probably had some trigger. You put it over and then they fight. And so that's the power of thinking about executing a technology kind of expression for your target. You can get obviously more complex, you know, the, the older you get, but it's not getting it's not getting too complicated. It's just thinking about how can we add to the experience, and that was such an amazing add of value to my kids because they saw this thing pop up, and it had such a great touch on their their love language uh, at a young age, and it's something that they're remembering. And so, it's not a it's not an either or. It's an and. It's you know visuals are still still vital and important. Live stream all is possible. Use all these tools so that you can have. Um, you can have immersive and interactive experiences with like 360 uh, v live streaming, backstage access. People want to know more about you, about you and your ministry. Use Instagram stories, and then focus on your target and telling the right stories. Don't overwhelm them, but 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 speak their language. Where I I but I but I will tell you that just be a learner. And all right bro we got that that was awesome you landed the plane like in less than 15 thank you uh l michelle so hey liam if you could unmute for a second i saw your your note my understanding is the internet bandwidth isn't so much affected by what is going in it's the the presenters feed so it's their bandwidth so liam do you know that not to be the case no i wasn't sure i just know it it's streaming a lot of people's faces to everyone else. So I didn't know if, if we yeah, should. I, I think it's the source bandwidth. Okay. That's my knowledge. That's we're going to go to L. L. Uh, you've already been, we're going to go straight over to you. So L, take it away. I am just, boy, Jay, you, you are a great assist. If you play basketball, man, <laughs> you just right up to like, just all I have to do is shoot it and it's nothing but net right now. I'm, I'm just so 
so many valuable, so much valuable information shared right then. Jay is absolutely right uh, when it, it is really boils down to the experience. I, I hope you can hear me okay. We can hear you. Um, your inner, your video is lagging a little bit, so but it's okay. I mean, unless somebody else has a suggestion, I think we're okay. So keep going. All right, and so okay, and so I was just I, I just kind of wanted to look up the quick. Whenever you're thinking about VR AR, just think about the word experience. To me, it's almost synonymous with what VR and AR is all about. And the definition of an experience is just simply to encounter or undergo. That's the verb definition of that. So when you're thinking about being to use VR, AR technology, begin to think about it from a standpoint of what can my audience um, encounter or undergo that they otherwise might not be able to without this. Like I said, you want to kind of think of VR, AR being synonymous with the word experience. When we got into uh, VR and AR work, we got into it because I am, and don't judge me, a reality television person. <laughs> I love to see inside of people's lives, uh, their thought process, and things like that. And from the very beginning of being in media ministry, I was the queen of behind the scenes. I'd be like, Pastor, this is really cool to see you go out on the pulpit, but I'm very much more interested in what you're doing in the office and what you just said uh, to uh, your wife, Pastor Nikki, as y'all were getting out of the car. I'm interested in the behind the scenes. What did you have for breakfast? What are you listening to on the radio? I'm just interested into the entire, in the entire experience. I believe from a ministry standpoint, we're moving into more of a life era type of ministry. We know Jesus as the way and the truth, but I strongly believe that we are in a dispensation of time, that we are now have a charge to show Jesus as being the life, to show him as being the John 10 and 10, the one who died for life and life more abundantly to the full till it overflows, like it says in the Amplified. So, with that said, not to get super spiritual and preach to the choir here, how can we then, within what we're doing, show the life side of it? And so my charge is to talk about, basically, how can you do VR, AR, okay? Jay talked about how now on Facebook, you can simply maybe use apps like Google Street View is a good app to use where you can take your own 360 photos with your phone. You download the Google Street View app. It will have uh, very basic instructions on the screen that will show you to how to take a 360. So without even buying a 360 camera, you can nine out of 10 times use your mobile device to take a 360 photo. And then I want to share something with you. There's tons of technology. You can by the very nature, remember what I said in the beginning, when you think of VR, AR, you're thinking about it from a standpoint of an experience. So right then and there, when you take a 360 photo, we're no longer seeing like a 2D view of something, we're seeing a 3D or a round 360 view of something. That in itself is an experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not just looking at it straight on, I'm somewhat getting the whole picture of where you are. But then it goes further in, with simple technology, I'm just gonna quickly share my screen really quickly and show you um, something that we have used here. Uh, a thing link technology, and then I have the zoom coming kind of down on the thing link. Where you can kind of embed a 360 photo in a software where as you can see, this is inside the Billy Graham Museum. So this is already cool because if you look up the Billy Graham Library, which is in Nashville, in case you don't know who Billy Graham is, here is a hot spot that says simply who is Billy Graham and you could click that and go to a website about him. Remember, we're all still in my 360 photo experience. Wow. But inside the Billy Graham Library in uh, Nashville, uh, not in Nashville, in Charlotte, North Carolina, 
uh, there is a museum with several rooms just like this that just has real live pictures from his ministry. I thought this would be a good one because it's uh, talking about God's message is for the entire world, which we know um, all of us in mission work. But inside this image, first of all, cool. Yay, you get to see around a room you've never been in. And if you go in this actual room one day, you'll already be familiar. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So you get to see around a place you've never been, missionaries. You're always in places none of us sometimes, or some of us have never been. Then you can program these spots. You could put a YouTube clip. Jay talked about earlier that this doesn't eliminate what we've been using. It just kind of enhances what we are using. You could put a survey in these uh, type experiences. What did a person um, get out of this? What did you, you know, what did you learn? We want to hear from you type of thing. Um, like I said, you could put a picture. This is where I am with the description and find out more online. This is great for engagement, okay? This is great to just kind of get people to really uh, immerse themselves in your vision and what you're doing and in the place and really uh, kind of feel a part of your mission work. This technology is called ThingLink and we work with them just to produce 360 experiences. That's what I did at a very basic level. I started with taking 360 photos. I began to think about uh, ministry from a standpoint of seeing the behind the scenes, seeing the lifestyle. So we started with the photo. Then we said, after it's cool, people may want to know more. So then you get an experience like what I just showed you where you can program in hotspots. And remember, this is all social technology. And when I say social, social meaning you can do it. Anyone can with a, a small a bit, of, bit of training. You don't have to be a master coder to do these things because people need to know about life and life right now. And then we build up. Now we started taking a 360 film. I, uh, the idea was to, instead of just telling your testimony, allowing people to experience your testimony. The one thing about VAR, AR, it's all about the experience. So instead of saying, I believe God is a healer, can we go on your journey? Like with the first story we released called Heal and show the healing process of a woman being diagnosed with breast cancer and overcoming that. What did it look like when she went into surgery? What did it look like during recovery? How is her confession during the life side of things? This is what is engaging people. This is what is healing people. This is what is propelling people to see ministry as not just being on the pulpit every Sunday, but being in every aspect of everyday life. AR is the same way. AR, it allows you to see more. The thing is, everyone wants to, we're in an age now where content is king, so on, so to speak. And the more you know, I think it's the more we can meet the, meet the needs of those that we serve. So with AR, instead of being completely immersed like you would in VR, by putting on a set of VR goggles, these are my original Google Cardboard that we first got <laughs> when we first got into this, AR would allow you to use just a device as simple as your mobile phone, look over an environment and kind of unlock that environment without fully immersing yourself in it. Um, I feel like there are several tools that, you know, obviously I can share on my website after this talk to help you get started. The one thing I need you to know though, it's doable to get started. Like Jay said, you can get started really on um, much of nothing but a vision to meet the needs of those that you serve, okay? And a few apps, a little bit of training, and getting started. But I, I really think the key in building a VR or AR experience is to know the life side of what you want to show. What do you want people to, as we said earlier, undergo or encounter? What is it that you want them to encounter? This by no way, like we said, will X out any other medium. They're all important. It's important to have photos. You gotta embed the photos in the experience. You want the videos in there. You gotta have the writing about it. I feel as though VR specifically 
brings all the mediums together to have a really amazing party. So it's a party of photos, it's a party of videos, it's a party of the best writing, it's a party of the best websites. But when I was a little girl and then we'll go into questions, I did like to read, but I also loved Cliff Notes. Anybody remember Cliff Notes? You can read the Cliff Notes of a book and kind of get all the key points right out right away. Why did I do that? I knew there'd be a quiz and just in case I didn't read in time, maybe I'd be a little more prepared. VR experiences are like cliff notes of life. They bring it all together under one roof. They say, here's a video about it. Here's a little write up about it. Here's the experience. So right then and there, you can get it all at one time and feel like you leave with something like you never had before. Google said this at one of their conferences a couple of years ago when they, uh, about a year after releasing Google Expedition, which, uh, which was a way to kind of do um, VR in schools. They asked how many people remember tests you took in school and what you learned from them and things like that. Some people raised their hand. They said, but how many people remember that field trip you went on, that one cool field trip that was amazing? Everybody raised their hand. They said, you know why you remember that? Because you remember the experience. People need to experience Jesus and what we're doing like never before. And I think VR immerses us in that, allows us to do that, and you can get started. It's easy to get started. So there's my speech and my five to ten minutes. And we're ready for questions whenever. Wow, wow, wow. Can I just like I'm I got goosebumps. Like I'm I'm encouraged. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, L. That was like uh, both inspirational and informative for me. And again, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but I, I consider myself somewhat informed, but great insights. So uh, we're going to go to Q&A. So we've got until about, oh, we've got about 12 or 13 minutes. Um, what I can't see, as we're going to start with you, Adam, Adam, can you kind of scroll through the, Q, the chat box to see who's, who's asked the first questions? Are there any there yet? And you are muted, so I'll unmute you while you scroll. You're good now, Adam. Uh, looks like everyone's just sharing information about themselves, which is awesome. <clears throat> um, Dave asked if, uh, El Michelle, you said ThinkLink was the website mm -hmm. you were using? So yes. Maybe if you want to post the URL for I that. I think somebody else did, actually, oh. in, in the chat. There Later. we go. I think I saw that. Anything then I else think we're see? good. Okay. Well, here's the downside. I can't see if you raise your hand because I can't see everybody. We've had actually like at 40 people in here, which is exciting. Um, so I'm going to just, you're going to have to unmute yourself and kind of be the first one to ask a question. And that's, that's the only thing I got right now. It's probably the best way to go. Comments, questions. <laughs> Rudolph here, I have a question. Go ahead, Rudolph. Now, very much of this sounds very experimental. Is there anybody that has actually got some substantial funding together to actually begin going deep into augmented reality and, and also into VR? Are there funding sources available? That's the well, has somebody managed to get some sub significant funding to actually go big into this area already. Okay, we'll go you, L, and then Jay, if you have anything to add, L. Um, basically, when we started out, that's a great question because we know funding makes things go. Um, we started out independently funding, um, my husband and myself making small investments into software that would help us do it more, engage more people, be able to do it for, for people say, uh, let us put together a VR experience for you, which began to generate funding on a small level, but on a more, on a greater level, we generated interest. We mm -hmm. generated influence, impact. And uh, subsequently after a year, we built our own um, VR environment. It's called Believe VR. It is actually uh, available through the Google Play Store via an app called Believe VR. We, uh, in that experience, that experience was several thousand dollars, but me and my husband saw that as seed in the ground. We just really worked with a, a developer to give every month to that. But the seed we gave was returned a thousandfold 
because then a local university said, we see what you're doing. Can you help us do this in education? So to answer your question, there is funding out there. It, it comes in unconventional ways, though. I think you have to kind of get out there and do it and show what you can offer in this and find ways in other industries that may have access to more funding initially, uh, find ways to help them begin to do it to get their message out there. At least this is what has worked for us and that will generate uh, funding for you. As far as just someone gifting or investing right away, we did not because there's a little bit of a learning curve just just across the board about this. We're still really in the um, early adopter phase, still in the early phases, stage of this. Even though we know about it, headsets are more readily available to do it. But I have a lot of friends who have this now because I suggested it. It's just a Google Cardboard one, you know, very basic level, who it is somewhere in a drawer underneath a lot of other stuff that they have. So we're still trying to, um, work with the adoption of this. So right now, I don't know of anywhere right all, but I do know there's interest uh, from a lot of parties in maybe you helping them and them paying for that, which could in turn help fund your ministry efforts. I'll go to you, Jay. In the meantime, before, if you have any additional thoughts, Jay, if you do have your comments or questions, go ahead and use the chat. I think that'll just help it go faster. So Adam, keep an eye on that. So Jay, anything to add on that particular question? Yeah. And yeah, I, I think uh, one of the tough things that I think a lot of people are struggling with generally is uh, platform access. So, you know, obviously we're very segmented between uh, if it's Android and Apple devices and really a lot of the key stuff, I think with exposure is going to be mobile VR and AR. There's always going to be high caliber experiences like a uh, Oculus Rift or a HoloLens, but that's going to take a lot of money and it's very few. I just tried recently uh, the Vive uh, experience, and that was a really amazing, immersive experience. I played a game, multiplayer game, with my with my friends, and I was like, "This is amazing!" But it also cost me thirty bucks an hour to do it, and it was like, you know, it was one of those things that I did it because it was a, a friend's party, and I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll do it." But it's really hard, and I think one of the things that I would say that is very exciting. Uh, Tim Cook, actually, the CEO of Apple, has said more that he's betting on AR than VR, which AR is going, uh, VR is going to integrate into that regardless mm -hmm. of, the, of the fact. But um, is, you know, every time there's a new Apple phone, the, the main key with AR specifically and a lot of this technology, if they bring that technology directly into your camera on your mobile phone, that's the game changer. And I think you're going to see a lot more funding so there, right now we're about to go into this release of a new iPhone here in September 12th. There's all these rumors that AR is going to be directly built into your native uh, phone at, uh, technology. And so if that happens, then developers have direct access, as El Michelle knows, any type of developing. If it's on the mobile platform and somebody can just call code and they don't have to build the infrastructure, it's way more affordable and scalable. And so I think we're at, I think that's why a lot of this stuff you're seeing high caliber, but I think mobile is the key for like larger experiences uh, and so I, I'm really, I think we're, we're getting real close to something and all the people like El Michelle that have invested early are going to be able to really take advantage of that uh, to a whole greater, you know, they're going to have that 10,000 hours investment type of thing before it even hits the market. So I, I think we're really close. So I don't think there's a lot of funding right now and I don't think people know how to make it on a wide, widespread, but we're getting real close to, to an avalanche. Awesome. That's super helpful. Uh, Adam, do we have any questions? Next question. Roy asked Jay something about the reverse engineering of the things that pop up for him and catch his attention. Uh, do you have a process to do it? With what point do you start? What, does he have a process for reverse engineering? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think something that I always try to keep in mind is my pre uh, suppositions, you know, like, you know, obviously I'm a little bit more of a digital native where I'm always, I'm always like checking out stuff, but like there was a, there was a, a Marvel movie that came out recently. And this is just an example where um, I create a lot of Facebook ads and I'm always doing stuff like that. And I realized that it was for a, uh, I forget which one it was like the wizard. I don't know. I'm not a, a comic person, but anyways, that, uh, yeah. So it was in my feed, but something that I noticed about it was the ad it, they created it as like, it looked like a, a, a news feed. 
And as I was scrolling, scrolling, it looked like two posts on a newsfeed, but all of a sudden the whole screen twisted, messed up my screen. And I really, what they did was they took a full video and they made it look like a Facebook stream. And it was just super interactive. I think I'm breaking up a bit. Um, but good, uh, what, what I found, what I found with that is that what caught my attention was I first thought, wait, how did they do that? I first was like, it caught my attention and it stopped me in my tracks. And then I figured out what was it? And then I realized, oh, they took a video and they just put two Facebook posts on top of each other. It kind of tricked me. And then I'm like, oh, so they just created a video clip. That's really cool. And so to me, it's more about, does it catch my attention? Obviously, there's all sorts of ways you can catch people's attention. So it isn't just catch your attention, but it's something that's compelling. Um, that, you know, you don't, you don't want to be annoying or, or invasive, but to me, it's just more of like, is it something, and then I usually ask the question, is that something I can do? And so I think I figure out, oh, is, was it just a video edit on an iMovie or do they use some kind of effects and after effect? Like, and I start thinking about that. So there's not, to me, it's not, there's not this robust process. It's more like I really, really quickly try to diagnose. And then what I tend to do is that I have an Evernote file that I have on, on my phone and I tend to take notes of things that stand out because you know five minutes later something else is funny or something happens on Facebook and I forget about it so I think having some kind of running you know uh, uh, Michael Hyatt says this in uh, having blog ideas you know just keep a running note on your phone file and keep blog ideas as they pop up I think technology ideas and just creative ideas having a, ru a running notepad where you're just remembering things that kind of pop out th through the day would probably be more helpful really because we for if we could just apply as much as we forget I think that would probably help us all. <laughs> That's a good word. Awesome. Adam, anything? What's next? Um, next is Steve. Steve asked, uh, I think this is for both L and uh, for Jay, uh, do you see VR being easier to get started than AR in a church setting? Let's, we'll go, yeah, we'll go. <laughs> who, who was first? Who did it was for? Adam? Uh, Steve asked it, but he didn't for, ask. Okay, well, we'll go both. to you, L. L, you go first, and because you're, well, you're both in church, but go ahead, L, and then Jay. Um, I am, I hate to say I'm partial because I am so excited about the new mediums in general. Um, I started in VR, so I would say, oh, it's a toss up. I, I think they're, they're both relatively social enough to get started. Um, VR, I, I took to first in that I was just really kind of taken aback by the 360 type exposures. I, I think being able to do that free through apps with your phone and things like that, I think it's good to uh, help you start to think about experiences. The same thing with AR though. There is an app um, and a company we kind of work with called Zapper. Very easy to get started. It, you know, you can scan, you can make flyers, so to speak, and have your church flyer scan and unlock and become like a video ad, kind of like how Jay was talking about. You think it's one thing, but then it becomes the next. Um, I, I would say from just taking, just beginning on a very basic level of 360 experiences, I, I personally think it's pretty easy to get started. I think with the Apple AR kit and things like that coming out, I think it's going to be very easy to start AR2, though. And um, like Jay was saying, um, a lot of people like Tim Cook thinking he's betting on AR. I think it's really going to be XR at the end of everything, which is AR, VR, and MR mixed. That's going to take over it all. I think it's, it's going to be the collaboration of all of those mediums. But it's good at this very ground level to know them all. Good. And I think VR is cool personally. <laughs> Good answer. I like that. Jay, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I would just echo what El Michelle just said. I, I think uh, trying stuff, I definitely think, and I was seeing in the chat some people talking about the difference of VR and 360 video. I think, you know, th th there's so many, you know, there's so many ways to get into this. I definitely think the key is crawl, walk, run small things. That's why I think 360 video is a great way to, to kind of crawl towards a VR experience. Um, yeah. And so, because you can do it, you don't need a developer. You don't need to kind of jump into this whole world. You can have something. And, and I've seen a lot of, you know, just with 360 video specifically, 
you know, I've seen a couple churches do this with 360 video. And again, there's, there is a difference. VR, VR would be way more immersive. It's more taken into account, you know, where you're being and, and it's, it's interactive. It isn't just a static video feed as 360 is. But, you know, I've seen people do like living room experiences. I saw one church 360 live stream their whole week service and they had a conversation on the couch. And they, they had this really cool experience that is obviously not a full expression of what VR can be and is, but it's this kind of first type of expression that, again, the goal isn't to get to the market. The goal is to accomplish some, some, some yeah. objectives. And so you're trying to figure out, and sometimes, I know this as being young, sometimes you think everybody should just see the value, but our job is to try, try to make the case that it is important. And sometimes you need A before you have B. And, and if you can't get it done, maybe you're just really bad at pitching it. And so I think that's like our job is figuring out how do we have smaller experiences that justify the larger cost. And sometimes some of these stuff like 360 and so forth can kind of justify that. Awesome. Awesome. So here's what I'm going to oh, go ahead. Al, you have another thought. I just want to say something to the 360 versus VR versus super VR experience debate <laughs> because a lot of people like kind of get into that but but what we what we have to focus on is VR is kind of in stages VR is anything where you completely immerse yourself in mm. a headset in that type of experience yes it gets deeper but I want to become so overwhelmed like well that wasn't a true VR experience so you're not doing true VR. no you're doing a 360 photo you can look around you can immerse yourself in that you can have hot spots in that it's it's a building type of thing because there's still a learning curve with all of this and some of the technology that's being used to create quote unquote major experiences it's not even public it's not even commercial you can't even get it so we don't want to get into a situation where we can't even do it. I'm a do it person. You can do it. You can start somewhere and you can build up to something great. So I just want to get into that. It's anything where you immerse yourself in that. All right. Thing. Awesome. Oh, well, awesome. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to keep us moving. I want to get through as many people as I can. I'm going to ask you for 15 seconds. Mark Johnson, you're next. Unmute. Tell us who you are, where you are, and what your area of interest is. Mark, go. So I'm Mark Johnson. I'm from Joplin, Missouri. I'm with uh, GNPI. And, uh, you know, my area of interest is anything and everything media. I've been in the media business for about 20 years. So I'm just, I'm loving it. All right. And so I guess that'll cover, I think I see Tom and I don't know, the GN offices. So, okay, great. Zach, go ahead. You're on next. 15 seconds. Hi, Zach King with uh, Reach Beyond from the HCJB Global. Not the final cut Zach King that some people have asked me. Sorry. Uh, my area of interest and passion and background is video production, but work as the emerging media coordinator for Europe and Central Asia areas. And I'm here to learn and build networks. Awesome, awesome. And then Jiraiya, I've unmuted you. Can you give us a shout out? Hey, um, I am Jiraiya. I work at the Cause Church in Brea, Orange County, uh, California. And um, I do uh, video production, I do marketing, I do graphic design, um, anything that has to do with media and visuals, that's my job. So um, I'm just trying to come up with creative ways to do ministry. So um, AR, VR is really awesome. And I went to NAB 2017 and I saw a lot of cool stuff. So I just want to figure out how to use that in the ministry platform. Amen. Amen and amen. John Brito. Yes, hi, I'm John, and I'm the pastor of Spirit Life Community Church, and right now I'm the person that is um, operating all the social media and church online, and uh, just uh, really looking forward to learn more about AR and VR and how to integrate that into our church setting. Nice, awesome. Patricia, can you give us a shout out? Patricia's iPad. Okay, I'm going to go to Steve B. You are unmuted. Yeah, thanks. I'm only here for one reason, to see if any of you want to bring your social technology uh, uh, information to the NBC and to bring it into the limited access countries around the world so we can get people to engage with scriptures. And your email's in the Steve B in the, in the thing. Right. All right, Tom Custer, I've unmuted you. Give us a shout out. Uh, Tom Custer, uh, Christ in Media. Institute at Bethany Lutheran College. I'm going to shamelessly promote our upcoming online conference opening October 23rd. Look on the chat 
for information. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Tim Cowley. Hey guys, I am with Frontiers. I'm trying to put people into um, the uh, Muslim world as short-termers or long-termers. Um, so trying to embed them on teams as well as within other organization and denominations and mission groups. Um, so that's with Expat Media Pro, that which is my own organization that I just started. We have one full timer out now, so we're hoping to keep growing. Amen. Love to see you, bro. Antoine, haven't seen you in too long. Give us a shout out. Hey. Uh, hi, everybody. Antoine, or as Clyde calls me, the godfather of grandfather of mobile ministry. But yes, he is. Um, uh, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I play at the intersection of user experience and service experience design with a lot of people. Um, and these days I just play, um, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, in terms of AR, VR and a few other areas, uh, I just play. All right, nice. Cal, I thought it was it's still image, but I saw you blink, your image blinked. So uh, Cal. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, this is Calvin Conkey. My wife and I are the founders and international coordinators for a ministry called Create International. We produce uh, gospel films for unreached peoples, animations, a lot of other things. And so I'm just interested in how AR and VR, especially AR, can be uh, used in missions and specifically uh, sharing the gospel with people uh, around the world. That's love it. it. Love it. Liam. Hey, Clyde. Um, great to be with you guys. My name is Liam Savage. I'm with One Hope. Uh, we reach children with God's word all over the world, and my role is on innovation to try to figure out how to do that with technology. All right. All right. You know what? And I'm going to come back here in a second. I, people are jumping out because they're going to miss. So I'm going to give my announcements really fast. Uh, and then I'll come back and we'll finish up. Here's what I'm going to suggest quickly. Um, Mission ARVR, as I mentioned, is our hashtag. Uh, we're going to do an executive summary. Whoops. Um, that's going to be posted at this URL, visualstory.org slash ARVR principles. So that'll hopefully be up by the end of the day. So you can see the summary, send it to your friends and whatever. Um, we really encourage you to go to our Mission AR VR Facebook group. So just go to Facebook, Mission AR slash VR, and you'll find us. You have to kind of request to be in there. We want this to be a place of community connection, sharing ideas. We don't want it to be like, you know, no spamming and all of that. Just be wise but create community, share. Um, and then I'll just mention we do have a thing called Mission Media University. We offer a number of courses that are gonna be beginning this fall. If you know somebody who could maybe teach a course on AR, VR, I'd love to talk with you about that. So now back to where we were. Um, that's, I think, all I've got on the announcement side. Joseph Mann, I've got you unmuted. Tell us something about you. Um, well, I just started um, learning with a program called Blender. It's a um, free professional CGI open source program and um, very basic beginning what I've learned with it so far. But so I'm just trying to get into the digital realm a bit more, learn a bit more about that. It's the way to do it. Uh, David Mann, are you there? All right, I can't tell. Brian James, I've unmuted you. Are you there? Can you give us a shout out? Yeah, Brian James. Uh, I'm a dabbler at best when it comes to production, but I love uh, I love where things are going and exploring how we can better leverage these, particularly for reaching unreached peoples. And my particular interest is in unreached Muslim people groups. Amen. Uh, I think media. We're already seeing seeing them using this technology to begin doing things, and we need to begin uh, doing more so we can uh, be in the game as well. All right, thanks. Annie Joy, I'm going fast. We've got like a minute. Annie, are you there? All right. Uh, I'm trying to pick people we haven't picked. Uh, Annie Joy. Ravi. Ravi, are you there? Can you give us a shout yes. out? Yes. Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, how I'm, are you? Yeah. Go. Yeah. I'm here in Modesto, California, interested to see how we can use AR and VR. Amen. So awesome. any, any links that you guys can send, I already downloaded some of the apps that were mentioned, but any apps that can be used for the iPhone, uh, we'd like to know more. And also, whenever you have webinars, I'd like my team to listen in. Absolutely. All right, Steve C., we got like 10 seconds each. Go. All right, Lulian, are you there in Romania? I'm here. 
Uh, I missed the Sermon on the Mountain, so I would really like to be part of it in VR. That's hey, man. Uh, awesome. I love it. All right, Curtis, we got Curtis. Janet, Janet, are you there? Yeah, hey, I'm Janet. I'm an all-round techie person, photographer, web designer, sound engineer. Uh, I'm a missionary in Greece, working with Hellenic Ministries. Uh, I'm also an apologist, and I'm actually really interested in finding out how we can no, use AR, VR environments to uh, teach apologetics. Nice. Okay, and really fast. We're a little bit over, but if you guys can hang in there, I just we got a few more. John Brunson, can you give us 10 seconds? Okay, not John. I think we got Joey. Scott Santi, give us a shout out. Scott? Oh, lost Scott. Hey, Frank. Frank, can you give us a shout out? Uh, hello, all. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, this is Frank from Uganda, and I'm trying to work with the ITEF evangelism. And I would like if you could have any more links here, please post over on the table. Thank you very much. Amen. And Roy, Roy from Latin America, how are you? Hi, everyone. I'm Roy. I'm from Costa Rica. I'm working with the Latin America region and the Caribbean uh, with digital media, also uh, everything with social media and web. And I want to learn about uh, the ER. Awesome. All, awesome. all the things. All right. Well, hey, team, that is it. We went a shade over. Thank you for hanging in there. Lord, we worship you. Help us to, to be innovators and appliers and fearless and leaning in. Thank you for Jay and for El Michelle. We worship you together in Jesus' name. We'll let everybody else log off. I'm going to ask if, if um, Adam and Jay and El, you can stay on for like a few minutes. We'll do a very short debrief. So, Grace Tall, we'll put the thing up by the end of the day at that link that I showed earlier. God bless. All right, so thanks to uh, L and Jay. Jay, that was awesome. Thanks for starting us. Uh, super appreciate that. Um, so how, here I gotta turn off the recording here.